Yesterday we were talking about the formula for area of rectangle or how to find the area of a rectangle. Why do we need to find the area of parallelogram or area of triangle at all? Why do we care about it? Why or how are you going to use it in real life? Okay. Remember when we were talking about area of rectangle, a lot of you shared some really good ideas and said, oh, I could, it could help me find area of a bedroom or if I have to replace the tiles on the floor or maybe if I need to replace the carpet, I need to be able to find the area of a rectangle. But think about it. Why do you think you might need area of a parallelogram or area of a triangle or area of any other shape? How are you going to use it in real life? How knowing this would help you when you either grow up or you can help your mom and dad figure out something. So I want you to take two minutes and think about this question. Why are we doing this today? Why are we trying to find area of a triangle or area of a parallelogram? We already know area of a rectangle. Why is that not enough? Why do we have to know more? Why, how will you use this in your real life? Go ahead. You have two minutes and I need to see some really good discussions at table groups. How are you going to use this in real life? Area of triangle or area of parallelogram? What uses do you have? I think maybe like um, the if you're gonna replace the carpet, maybe the floor is in the same shape. Maybe it's diagonal because it won't fit in the apartment, so they made it diagonal. So you might need diagonal shapes. Okay, I heard some really good discussion as I was walking around the room, and in particular, I would like to ask everyone at Andrea's table group. Okay. Who would like to share what you were discussing because they had some really interesting ideas including something that involved food. And let's hear, Andrea, would you like to share? Why do you think we're trying to find area of parallelograms and area of triangle? What are some real life uses for that? Like a bridge, on a bridge, a design. Okay, so you are, if you're going to design a bridge like the popsicle bridge challenge that we had and you had some of you had those triangular patterns in there. So if you're designing a bridge, you might need to find the area of a triangle in that case. Okay, that's an excellent idea. Um, Clarissa. Um, you could see about the sandwich, how um, the, like, cutting the bread and then the sandwich. Okay, you can cut a, triang a sandwich into a triangle by cutting it around the, uh, the diagonal and you might want to find the area of your sandwich. Okay, that would be interesting. Anyone else? Raimundo. Okay, pizza would be interesting, but you have to remember in your triangle or in your rectangle, what do we have? Okay, for example, if this is your triangle or if this was your rectangle yesterday when we were talking about this, what is this part called? What is this side called? It had a special name. What is it called? Janet? Base. It's called the base. Okay, and look at me. I erased it. Okay, here. It's called the base. Okay, if this is the base, then this also will be the base. Remember we said, really, any of these sides can be the base. But we try, when we are doing math, we try to find the side that is on the bottom, and that is considered as your base, so that it's easy for everyone to do the calculations, right? But look at pizza, Raimundo. When you're talking about pizza, do you have a flat base? No. Remember your pizza, you're cutting it out from something that is a circle, right? So look at this. It might not be a flat base like the one we we're discussing, but it's very close. So great try. Anyone else? Would anyone like to share why else we need to define area of triangles or parallelogram? Um, Angel? Probably if you're trying to make a design in the park or a rooftop. Okay, so if you're trying to make a triangular design in the park, and a lot of the parks are triangular in shape. Not everything in the world is rectangular and square, okay? The world looks beautiful because of all the shapes that we see around us, okay? And how many of you have seen different shapes? 
around us. When we are walking, we might see something that's a circle, something that is triangular. So again, remember, the reason we are trying to do this is because not everything is a rectangle or a square. You might be needing to find the area of a room that's triangular or maybe that's a parallelogram, and you should be able to do that. And on that note, please pick up your workbook, okay? And we are on this page that says rectangle on top. Okay. Everyone, you have a yellow sheet that looks like this. Okay. Maybe one of you can cut it, but before that, let's number you or actually pick a letter from A to G so that you know that for the length of this lesson, everyone will be um, doing the same letter. We'll start from this end and go around in a U so that it's easier for everyone to count off. So if I am here, then Monica's A, Marquise is B, Raphael is C, and if Shara was here, then she would be D, okay? So let's see if you can work as a group and take or pick your letter. Go ahead. Really quickly, we can cut this paper so that everyone gets their rectangle. Now, I see most of you already have your rectangle. Go ahead and glue it in this work area that you have here. Okay, let's start labeling it. What is this side called? What should I label my side? This side. Okay, what should I label it as, Gabe? This is my base. And remember, we can probably write here base equals B so that we can remember that the letter B stands for base. What is this side called? Who remembers what is this side called? Ramundo? Height. It's called height and we can probably write height and the letter representing height is H so we can go and write H on this side. And this paper that you're using right now, the yellow sheet, do you see there are tiny little squares on it? Okay, yeah. those are the centimeters grid. What it really means is this, the unit here would be centimeters, okay? So let's go ahead and count how much is your base. So I'm going to count from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my base here is six centimeters. Okay, make sure you're putting the right units. Now let's count the height. And remember, you're counting your own rectangle, so don't copy six just because I am doing this. Count your own rectangle and let's count the height. One, two, three. So the height here is three centimeters for the rectangle that I have. Now remember, you are supposed to use something that you already know to figure out something you don't know. But what do we know about the area of a rectangle? What did we learn about area of rectangle that we can use? How can I figure out the area of this rectangle? How can I figure out area of this rectangle? Uh, Maritza? Area equals space times. Okay, so I'm going to write some notes for me and remember, Notes should always be what you think is right for you. That means it should be in your language. It should be what is easier for you to understand. So they should be in your words, okay? So I can go ahead and write, I know area of rectangle equals base times height, okay? Or I can write A, and I have to write here, area equals A, A equals base times height. Using the formula for area of a rectangle, can I find the area of this rectangle? Do I know the base? Do you know the base for your rectangle? How much is it? Do you know the height? Does everyone know the height of their rectangle, yes or no? Yes. So go ahead and find the area of your rectangle. And don't forget to put the correct units, okay? Let's see if we remember. What are the units for area? 
What are the units for area? What should I use? Okay, who can help me? Anthony? Square Squared centimeters, remember? So I can write it as square centimeters. Okay, there's another way I can write it. 18, remember I said sometimes in questions you'll notice it, they don't really write the whole word square, but they can write it as SQ and then centimeters. Or is there another way we discussed yesterday? How can I write this? If I don't want to write it, how can I write it? Kevin? You can write 18 centimeters and two. Okay, 18 centimeters squared with a two, correct. Okay, and the answer, and I think I had shape A, so for A it should be 18 square centimeters. <clears throat> that is the area of the rectangle that I have, okay? You will have possibly if you have shape B, C, or D, your answer will be different from mine. Who would like to share what did they get for rectangle B? Who would like to share? Okay, Joanna, did you have rectangle B? Yeah. And what did you get? I got 30 square centimeters. You got 30, let's see. What was your base? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Five what? Centimeters. Correct. So I had five centimeters here as my base. What was your height? Six centimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six centimeters. So that means area equals, and what did you do next? Height times five times six. And your answer was? Thirty. Thirty what? Square centimeters. Square centimeters, thank you. Okay, good. What did we get for shape C? Okay, what did we get for rectangle C? Um, Klein? Um, my base was four centimeters. Base is four centimeters. And my height was two centimeters. Height is two centimeters. And area was? Area equals two centimeters. And that would be? Eight square centimeters. Eight square centimeters. Did everyone get that? Yes. Anyone who had the C rectangle? Okay. What about D? Who had D? Who would like to share D? Tatiana? So first, what was your base? Two centimeters. So my base was two centimeters. What was your height? Six centimeters and area equals four square centimeters. And how did you get that? Multiply the base two centimeters and the height, which is six centimeters, and your area was twelve what? Twelve square centimeters. Great. Thumbs up, thumbs down. How's everyone feeling about area of a rectangle? Okay. Great. Let's move on to the next one.